Good morning to you here. Uh, we're kind of playing in the shop today, looking for something to do. So I, uh, on my uh, barrel heater for my greenhouse, I managed to burn up the motor yesterday. So I took a good fan and modified it just to keep the air moving. So my exchanger didn't overheat. So today, here's what I'm up to. Um, I bought one of these uh, universal car blowers from Princess Auto. It's just surplus junk they have laying around. You can pick it up for five bucks. And it came in this housing here. And it's just a DC motor hooked up to a squirrel cage blower. So uh, of course you got to figure out how the hell they put them things together because there's no not one screw in the whole thing. Anyway, I figured all that out and I managed to get this blower cage off of here. Um, the reason being is this is a DC motor and it's not an efficient one it's brushes uh, it would I would have to put a battery charger out there and a battery and, and keep it running non-stop so I wouldn't be saving a lot by just putting electric heat back in the greenhouse so but I did need the cage it's a terrible design for for a squirrel cage although it does work it, it it's a, it's a very very poorly designed uh, but it does try and move air um, so what I've done is I've, I've been on the look for an AC motor, of course, that's a little more power smart. Um, and what I came up with was this old fan actually out of the greenhouse. Um, just a three-speed oscillating fan had this thing. This was my first air conditioner 15 years ago. So she's uh, she's been well used. You can see it's got some residue on here from being in the shop. Uh, some uh, soot residue from uh, oil burner. But anyway, it still works. Um, so what I'm doing is I've, I've scavenged up my squirrel cage. I've cleaned the shaft off of here. So of course now we have, uh, well, you'll get the idea there. The squirrel cage goes on here. Coffee can fits nice and snug in here. And the snugger you have the fit, the better airflow you're going to get, the better push. Um, of course you don't want it rubbing. I have built one similar to this. Uh, it is right here on my gasifier. Um, the, the motor I had laying around, it was out of my semi actually, and I had bought a new backer plate and a new squirrel cage for the semi. So I just end up changing the motor, sealing it up, and then I had some six inch pipe actually. Because this gets warm, I decided to do it out of pipe and it's a metal impeller on there. So, uh, it works well, very well. So we're going to kind of do the same thing here but with a coffee can because this is going to be on the cold air and it's going to push. Of course this doesn't fit in the coffee can, so just thought I'd show you what I'm up to here. I just took the tin snips and I gave everything a little bit of a cut there to get this in there. So then really all I need is to uh, copy this hole into the back of the tin there, stick this on there. And then there's a backer nut here that used to hold, it goes on here, it used to hold this cage here on. And we'll use that to secure the can. We will, uh, the shaft just comes out flush here. So we have two options. I can nip this off here. If you can see that here, I'm trying to, if you, I can nip this off and then put on my jam nut on here. Or I can just do something like dab some hot glue in there, sticker on there. It stays on there even without anything, but you don't want to put it all together and then have it fall apart. Then we'll cut a hole in the side of here. So it will suck air through here and it will discharge air out the side and we'll, we'll convert it so that it actually is adapted to a five inch pipe coming off the side, which will hook right up to our uh, cold air return in our greenhouse. So that's what I'm up to here. I might uh, throw up another video here once it's working. All right. All right. Uh, here's our state of the art retrofitted squirrel cage blower system for our forced air barrel burner to heat the greenhouse. Nice and quiet. Um, you can see uh, she's a real work of art here. Uh, I've got the coffee can there, the tobacco can here. Um, 
we got some pretty tight clearances, but it for some reason doesn't rub. Rubs when you shut it off, and then when you start it, it doesn't. I got some load bearing um, wood here that I've uh, attached with some hot glue just to stabilize it because there will be a duct that comes out of here. And what I'll do there is just that I'll, uh, I'll core out the lid to a five inch hole and uh, hook that to my cold air supply. I'm not going to do that yet today. It's pretty ugly outside today, so uh, we're going to keep her in the shop for now. Uh, you can just see, uh, I don't know if you can see this or not here. You can see her pulling the smoke from a fair bit. That's on low. She's sucking pretty good. Um, so anyway, that's kind of how we did it here. We used the uh, handyman secret weapon here. And then we did some hot glue. We didn't hot glue all the way around. We got to leave some some air there for this motor to breathe. Uh, hopefully it doesn't overheat the motor even at that. And the oscillation I've taped up so some moron, namely myself, doesn't decide to kick her the oscillate on. So anyway, that's kind of what you can do when you're in a bind. Uh, it's. Uh, not something you'd write home about but uh, it does do the job and like I say had it had DC been acceptable out in the greenhouse uh, this wouldn't have had to happen but having batteries and uh, battery chargers out in the greenhouse not really my first uh, my first uh, preference I guess if you will uh, if I did have batteries out there I could run it off the solar array or even the windmill but uh, if the battery got weak or something in the middle of the night then I wouldn't have any blower at all so I'd, I'd just as soon rely on uh, AC power here because I do have a steady supply out there and uh, how do you put it that's that's that for now alright